What's up everybody? Um, welcome back to another quick little video on the garage here and uh, today I wanted to just kind of record and, and show you guys this pretty cool little product I found. Um, so it's this little device right here. This is a Bluetooth content sensor uh, made by Fuelit. Essentially it works with tapping into um, a sensor in your fuel lines and you can actually measure the content of your E85. It's something that we did on a buddy of mine, Brandon's car. Um, he picked up the sensor and then like a whole gauge thing and the whole bit. Um, my car, I have gauges in it already and I already run like a dual gauge pod and I don't really know where I would mount a third one. So I don't really care to add any more gauges in, in, in my car. But like I said, this is actually Bluetooth. So what's pretty cool about this is um, you can actually monitor everything via an app, which we'll kind of get into later. The app actually shows you content level and I think it even shows you fuel temps, which is pretty cool. So we might be able to monitor that kind of thing. and. Uh, I'll discuss why we want to look into that uh, in just a second here. So with that being said, I figured I'd just go ahead and show you guys what all I picked up. So as you already saw, this is the like sensor adapter piece. I guess what basically runs the Bluetooth. Um, and I ordered just the Bluetooth sensor adapter harness thing. So I'll link that below for you guys to check out. Again, Fuel It made it. It's a pretty cool little piece. It's not too expensive and uh, definitely worth considering if you are in the market for E85 and, and wanting to run that in your vehicle. Um, with this piece, it also came with the adapter harness right here. And it also came with this little piece for tapping into your power, um, which is pretty neat. So it works with like the power on this harness. You kind of just slide it up into that piece there and then cl clamp it shut. And then it's just got a ground. So this harness is pretty straightforward. It clips into the end of your Bluetooth sender and then you just run the wires to power and ground and uh, I believe it just needs a 12 volt source so nothing too crazy there and then like I said ground and uh, yeah it just runs off Bluetooth other than that so that's why I got the multimeter out I'm gonna do a little bit of digging in the center console to figure out where I want to use for my 12 volt source because I'll show you where the sensor is on the car so I did previously install the sensor already so if you can't tell the car is obviously currently under maintenance i did a whole bunch of revisions to it in the last month or so and i uh, just kind of wanted to finalize a bunch of stuff i'm really just kind of trying to wrap everything up really it, in terms of the build um so yeah that was kind of what's been going on and ultimately why i decided to kind of pick this up while i had some downtime uh, i figured what better time to install the 85 sensor because really like even if i didn't pick this up i figured it wouldn't be a bad thing to put the sensor in the line just so that it was there in the event that i ever wanted to add it later but effectively i added the sensor and i was like all right it'd be silly not to just pick up the the content sensor as well um, but let me show you the sensor and how i've got it mounted and kind of give you that quick overview as well okay so we are under the car here this is the uh, driver's side of the vehicle where I run my fuel lines so you can see those coming down you know behind the K member and everything so those lines come down and then they run down the side of the car here back to the fuel tank back there you see my fuel filter um, and so right here is where I ultimately decided to add in the sensor because it's where I felt was the uh, the most like open area because as you can see I've got the um, welded in subframe connectors and that kind of eats up a lot of this area so it makes it a little bit challenging where you want to place things but ultimately i think this worked out you know quite well where the uh, sensor is mounted and so effectively it uses um 38 gm quick connects so that's what these are you just snap them on it's kind of like the the factory fuel system and then you just need the adapter fittings and then your hose ends so um this was a dash six you know an to 38 gm quick connect and then the sensor right here so that's basically already in line and this is the return line because i don't want to restrict the flow of the fuel to the motor i'd rather check it on the back end because this is like not a pressurized line so the flow through it doesn't really matter that much it's not restricting anything you're not going to cause potential issues because this effectively is a dash six in terms of the inner diameter of the line return line is best so that's what we've got here and then um yeah now i'm sure you guys can imagine this is going to be a very challenging install since we've already got the uh sensor in place that all the hard work's already done so the bluetooth piece literally just clips onto this guy and i believe that was it 
Yeah, like so. So we'll uh, adapt the other harness and to here. So the sensor, the harness clips in right about here and then passes through and then through up to there. And then basically I just got to route the rest of the wires up into the interior of the car for power and ground. All right, so back on the outside of the car here and we have our line like I was showing you guys before. And effectively this just needs to route up. I'm gonna pull it right here. And then this just needs to go into the interior. And I actually have a cut hole right here on that rubber grommet that's exposed at the moment. Cause I used to run my fuel system wiring through here, but I pulled that and I ran it through the other side um, just to clean up the engine bay. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these through right here and that'll pop into the interior. And then I'll run that probably up into the center console um, because I did do some digging and I found a 12 volt source in there that I'll show you guys in just a second. be through so I should be able to jump in the interior and pull it the rest of the way cool that's that so in terms of wiring underneath the vehicle we've pretty much wrapped up already which is great oh there's a frog Hello, friend. Can you guys see that? It's chilling on my creeper. My bad. Um, so yeah, basically wrapped up. I'm just gonna throw like uh, maybe a zip tie in one or two places just to secure that wiring so it doesn't ever like get loose and do anything weird. But it'll be nice and tight the way it is. I wanted to keep most of the slack in the interior because then I can tie it up where I need to in the center console kind of thing. So uh, let's jump over there and get to that. All right, you can see there that where the wiring harness pops through in that rubber grommet. I'm just gonna run the harness up underneath the dash area, behind the steering wheel and whatnot. So it'll go across there, over into the center console, and then we're gonna run our power and ground in here. All right, so in the center console here, you've got like a module box at the back, and uh, there's a couple nuts holding it down, and uh, those are good ground. Just a 10 millimeter. So I'm pulling this nut up. I've ran the wiring through where I showed you guys it was gonna be, and it actually almost ended up being perfect length because it ends up ending like right here, as you can kind of see that split or whatever. So throw the ground on to this stud here, and then I'm just gonna run that nut back down. All right, that was a fun detour. I uh, dropped the nut and it went between the carpet and <laughs> the seat and everything, so fine it's really fine you got it now and so now I'll show you guys what I did to find my 12 volt source here pull out the handy dandy multimeter set it on the, the 20 setting so that I can actually read good numbers all right so I played around and, and tried a bunch of different locations so um, so this is for the cigarette lighter port thing and uh, that just you know plugs into here I tapped into this for power for the line lock, so and I've double checked it. And it is a 12 volt source, so I'll show you guys real quick on the multimeter. So I'm just gonna take my little terminals, stick them in the pins here, and you can see jumped up to we're about 12 volts. So that's gonna be a good power source. So we've already got our ground. I just need to tap in for power. So they provided this uh, little quick crimp connect piece, which is pretty cool. So basically, we'll take the power and uh, run it up into that piece there and so now that that's basically in there I just need to crimp it onto the power wire right here and then we'll be good to go yeah there you go I uh, literally was able to do that by hand so just squeeze it until it pops shut and uh, that should have good power now so I'm gonna go ahead and run this guy back into here 
Now the one thing I will say is um, that is not a key on 12 volt source. I couldn't find anything in the center console that was key on 12 volt. I know I kind of probably spent some more time digging around and, and maybe pulling from like the passenger fuse box or something, but I just didn't feel like it was worth spending a whole lot of time on it. Cause that was ultimately a concern of mine was if I could find a key on 12 volt source, I felt like that was gonna be better because I don't want this constantly pulling power um and draining the battery for any particular reason but i do believe uh, if i remember correctly I, I did a little bit of digging online i saw people ask that question because they had the same concerns and people ultimately said like it didn't drain over a long time um so i guess we'll find out you know if that's going to be an issue for me so hopefully it's not but uh i believe that the bluetooth device is you know kind of smart at least to some extent so hopefully it turns itself off and just knows like low power mode or whatever um, we'll see um, if it becomes an issue then I'll readdress it later on down the line but for now that gives us a good 12 volt source and ground so that Bluetooth device is ready to go so we can actually go ahead and jump into the app and see and make sure that it works I can't actually start it if you saw the, the blowers missing I'm currently waiting on a new one so uh, we'll see if I can get a little bit of fuel in there to at least make sure that it seems like it's working and then once everything's back I'll actually come back to this video and show you guys the finished product when the car is running show you the fuel temps everything like that but yeah for now let's just uh button all this stuff up and we'll do like a quick check all right shout out to the wife she came down and helped me out with uh, cycling the fuel system a few times because like i said this is basically just coming back together uh, for the first time after making a number of changes including obviously the um the sensor and so i wanted to verify for leaks and make sure everything was good and tight but now that we have run some fuel in it looks like we have some content measurements there um it says e60 it was about, it got up to E69 when we kind of cycled it one or two times. I imagine it's going to bounce around a little bit depending. Um, the fuel temperature seems a little off to me at 330 degrees Celsius. Um, so I'm not sure what's up with that one, but uh, maybe that'll, <laughs> maybe we can, oh, there's settings. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Um, so when it came to actually attack, like connecting to the app, all I did was turn the app on. And like I said, that sensor sender has power. So I just hit connect and then it was like beep boop bop and it connected somehow. I didn't have to do a pin or anything. So pretty nifty. I'm kind of curious, I guess, what would happen if you had too many of these in the same vicinity, but I'm not really entirely sure when it comes to that. So, but yeah, that being said, I mean, it seems like we've got connection. Um, there's some settings I can play around with. So I'm gonna do that. And uh, yeah, good, good to go for now. So pretty cool product to say the least. And again, this is the Fuelit uh, E85 like Bluetooth sender piece. You can buy the sensor in Bluetooth sender on their website. So definitely check that out if it's something you're interested in. What's really cool about it, in my opinion, is the fact that it is universal. So like it, obviously I'm installing this on my Mustang. Uh, I noticed that for the most part, the Fuelit brand company seemed to be much more popular in like the European market when it's like the BMWs and the Audis and stuff. So they've got a number of like bolt-in kits for those cars. And I did see one actually for the S550 Mustang. So that's pretty cool. Um, so if you wanted to incorporate that into, you know, your, your S550, they've got a really convenient kit for that. But that being said, you're not limited to that. If you've got any kind of aftermarket fuel system, you saw what I did. I, I just picked up some quick connect fittings to adapt that sensor in. And that's really all it takes to put that on any vehicle um, that you have E85 and, and wanna you know measure your content with. I look forward to doing some interesting observations and tests over time, kind of like monitoring fuel temps and stuff. So I kind of alluded to that earlier. So the way that my fuel system set up, we've got our dash eight feed, it goes to a Y block and then it splits at the Y block to come to both of the rails at the front here, goes through the rails, both rails, and they both have 90s that come out. And both of those 90s at the back of the rails lead up to the regulator here. So you've got both of those feed lines on both sides. And what you can't see is the return line, which is in the bottom. And that return line obviously goes from the regulator back to the tank, but is intercepted by that sensor for the content. So that's kind of the, the gist of my fuel system. And um, some people have concerns when it comes to like fuel temps because there's a thing called vapor lock. I'd recommend checking it out if, it, if you're not familiar. Um, essentially, if your fuel gets too hot, it can actually boil and it won't move correctly. So it, you'll basically get like bubbles that potentially could make it to the injector and cause issues with how it's running but uh in lieu of that i mean what i've done if you can see is um i've got some insulation that, like this like aluminum foil bubble wrap stuff that i stuck in the valley i also wrapped my fuel lines under the manifold with some dei 
uh, insulation. So under the manifold, it's all insulated as best as it can be. Outside of it, it's not because I wasn't worried about it on the outside. But the benefit is the return style fuel system. So the, the fuel doesn't sit in the engine bay. That's usually where you run into issues with vapor lock. So since it comes in and then goes back, typically the fuel temps don't get too high. But that being said, I can still monitor the fuel temps with that new sensor and Bluetooth sender as long as the fuel temps work correctly. And, get sorted once uh, once the car's actually running. The main thing that's gonna generate heat in your fuel is actually gonna be how many pumps you run. So on a car like uh, my buddy Brandon's, I actually have done a little bit of testing because his gauge and sensor monitors the same stuff. So I was able to kind of keep an eye on the fuel temps with his car and um, found that running triple pumps for like almost an hour of driving, it started at like 60 degrees, I think it was about 60 degrees ambient, and the fuel temps got about to like 90, and that's pretty much as high as they got after about an hour of driving. So really not too bad. Um, it'll be more interesting to see, I guess, what happens during the summertime when it's obviously a lot hotter out and then, you know, the temps are way, way higher throughout the whole motor and everything. But that also, to, to caveat from that, like I said, that was also running all three pumps all the time, because his we manually switch on and off. So realistically, that's not something you would ever do because you really only need about one um, when cruising around, two to be safe, just because, you know, if you decide to get into it a little bit. Um, his car, we've got three, obviously, and then three is when he's gonna be racing it and everything like that. So um, my whole goal with that test and, and the continued testing that I'm gonna do with it is to push it to the extremes to see really like how much it can take before it is an issue or whether or not it even will be an issue. So. Okay, so the car is now back together and running. This is post Mustang week at this point. Um, so I got the car running. I've had a few minor issues that I'm still trying to get sorted out, but um, one of those was getting the um, Bluetooth sensor reconnected. So for whatever reason, um, after initially installing and everything and getting the car started, um, I guess it seems like what had occurred was that there was like an iOS update or something. So there was an update to the app and um, within the app, I was having an issue trying to update it and uh, I kept wanting to update, but not updating. And I ultimately figured out that it seemed that the problem was I hadn't updated my iOS, did so, now it connects. So I wanted to show you guys the connecting with the car running, fuel temps, and then E85 content. All right, so you can see the app here. I'm just gonna come down here and hit connect. It's gonna say scanning, connecting. All right, there you go. So. E79 content currently and I can swipe over and it shows me content as well as temp. Um, it is like a 90-ish degree ambient right now so um, well maybe mid 80s I'm not positive but um, there you see fuel temps and when cruising home I was monitoring this and I was able to see that I got up to like 140 um, and that was basically like you know 10 miles to empty on E85, two pumps running full time um, in about 100, at night, yeah, I'd say mid 90 degree temperatures and that's where I saw that 140. So definitely pretty neat to be able to actually monitor that just to kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, if you're running E85, I think like around 170 to 180 degrees is about when you hit the boiling temperature, which can be, you know, relevant for vapor lock. If you're not familiar, check it out. It's it's not really a common thing to be concerned with when it comes to return style fuel systems, especially like I said, with one in, like two pumps full time at about 95 to 100 degree ambient temps, sunny out, um, and, and probably about, I don't know, really low fuel so running through that fuel more consistently with the twin pump setup nonetheless everything's working good pretty solid little pickup i'm really happy with it so far now that i got it working again so all that being said um, definitely two thumbs up on the product definitely recommended links are going to be below definitely check it out if it's something you're interested in um, and if you guys are new to the channel definitely please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing to stay tuned for more content um, lots of stuff planned so stay tuned for that and uh, i think that's going to do it so peace out i'll catch you in the next one